The Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Remaster released the other day and, having played it through from start to finish, I can say that I've had a pretty decent time with it. However, while I was playing, I did notice that the game was prone to fairly regular stutters, which, I can't deny, did affect my overall enjoyment. So, since I'm guessing that I'm not the only person that was running into this issue, today we're going to be taking a look at how we can fix, or at least massively reduce said stutters, and hopefully end up with a much better feeling game as a result. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pixel, and welcome to the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel. Now, before we get started, I think that it's important that we first try to define what kind of problem we are trying to fix, as different types of performance issues require different types of fixes, and if the issue that you're personally facing is different to the one that I'm trying to address in this video, then there's a good chance that this video is not going to be able to help you. To be clear, we are trying to fix the stutters that can happen during gameplay. These are basically mini freezes where the entire game can appear to lock up, even if just for a fraction of a second. Since I know how hard it can sometimes be to find advice on performance issues with you not always knowing exactly what to search for or where to look, I'm going to very quickly go over the cinematic stutter and CPU slash GPU bottlenecks before explaining how to best tackle these stutters in particular. If you want to skip this next little bit and go straight to the stutter fix, I will leave a timestamp down in the description below. With that said, if you're only getting stutters during the cinematics that play at the start of each mission, you're simply going to want to disable shader preload during cinematics in the options menu. This will unfortunately result in much longer load times, but the cinematic should at least be nice and fluid. On the other hand, if you're seeing prolonged FPS drops during gameplay or micro stutter, that is most likely going to be due to either a CPU or a GPU bottleneck. If it's your GPU that's holding you back, you should simply be able to lower some of the more expensive graphical settings and see your frame rate increase and become more stable. Options such as screen space ambient occlusion, subsurface scattering, shadow quality, anti-aliasing and dynamic light limits are all very heavy on your GPU and where you should be able to claw back some of that performance. If you're getting high frame rates but the game still doesn't feel very smooth, then there's a good chance that you're experiencing something like micro stutter due to a CPU bottleneck. Unfortunately, other than overclocking your CPU or getting an upgrade, there's not really too much that can be done here, at least not in this particular game. In this situation, all I can really suggest is that you lock your frame rate to something that you know that your CPU can comfortably handle, as this should, at the very least, help to minimise any frame time inconsistencies and thus make the game feel much smoother, despite the lower frame rate. Now, when it comes to the main focus of this video, the issue of persistent stutters, I'm going to first very quickly explain what I had to change in order to fix it, and then we'll dive a little bit deeper into why this sort of thing happens in the first place and what you can watch out for in other games in future. I'll also stick up some comparison footage so you can see the results for yourself. Since video is not really all that great when it comes to showing stutters, you're going to really want to keep an eye on that performance overlay, and most importantly, the yellow frame rate graph at the bottom. These big dips into the yellow are stutters, and the deeper and wider each dip is, the bigger that stutter will be. But anyway, to fix these annoying stutters, all I had to do was disable a few options in the advanced graphical settings menu. These were fill remaining memory, Cache Sun Shadow Maps and Cache Spot Shadow Maps. To be honest, if you're running a GPU with 8GB or more of VRAM, then you could most likely get away with leaving both the cache related settings enabled, but since we're still getting great performance with them disabled, I'd rather be safe than sorry. As a general rule of thumb, these sorts of what I like to call chunky stutters are like 9 times out of 10 due to some form of memory limitation, be it either system memory or GPU memory, and when they're not due to a memory limitation, it's normally down to something much more sinister such as game bugs, driver issues, slow storage solutions or faulty hardware, all things that are much harder to diagnose and fix most of the time. If you come across these sorts of stutters in other games in future, I simply suggest that you attempt to relieve the pressure on your memory to see if that helps eradicate any of these annoying issues. Simply by knowing that the number one reason for a game to stutter is a memory limitation, I was able to start playing around with some of the more memory hungry options to see if I was able to lower the usage enough to fix, or at least reduce the frequency of these stutters. Normally, the main culprits for this kind of stuff would be texture quality and shadow quality, however, more and more games are starting to include cache-related settings which aim to take advantage of excess VRAM. These can actually help boost performance a little by preventing the computer from having to redraw certain aspects of the scene each and every frame, with shadows being one of the most commonly used examples. So, this is basically a trade-off between processing power and VRAM. The good news is that most games do appear to manage this trade-off fairly well, it just appears that, at least on my system, the remaster is not one of them. 
The downside of having these three options disabled is that in theory you could see a small decrease to performance, however, if you've been struggling with these stutters, the upsides are going to massively outweigh any potential downsides, and to be clear, we're only talking about a few percent performance difference at most anyway, so I doubt that most people are going to even notice. Hopefully, changing these settings should fix or at least drastically reduce the frequency of any stutters that you've been experiencing. If this video has helped you out, please do consider slapping that subscribe button and dinging that bell so you get notified of our future uploads. Also, if you like this video, you can like this video, and if you've got any questions, suggestions, or feedback, please leave them down in the comment section below, and I will try and get back to you. With all that said, that is going to be me done for today, so from myself and everybody here at the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel, thank you so much for watching. I'll be back soon with some more videos, so until next time, I will catch you later. Bye-bye.